Welcome to Watches with Dennis, and today I am reviewing the Rotary Super 7 Scuba, reference S7S002B. This watch is from my personal collection. It was purchased new, and I've owned it for a few weeks at this point. So, Rotary partnered with a watch realtor named Watch Nation to establish the Super 7 Scuba range in 2020. This reference is obviously the orange dial model, and it's on a steel bracelet. The watch features 300 meters of water resistance. So let's uh, get out the calipers and take some measurements. So Watch Nation claims that the diameter is 42 millimeters, getting about 42 and a half. They claim that the watch thickness is 13.8 millimeters, which I do get 13.8 millimeters there. The lug width is supposed to be 22 millimeters. Yep, 22 millimeters. As usual on the website, I did not see a lug to lug listing. I'm getting about 47.5 millimeters. So looking at the face of this watch, one can see the rich orange dial. There are applied indices filled with loom uh, around every hour position except at the three o'clock, which is where we have a day and date feature. The 12 o'clock position up towards it, you can see the rotary logo along with the Super 7 branding. And then closer towards the six o'clock position, you can see the scuba label, the water resistance, that it's an automatic movement. And flanking the six o'clock positions is where it says British designed. The hour and minute hands are sword shaped, whereas the second hand is a lollipop. The crystal of this watch is sapphire. The bezel insert is ceramic. You can see that it's a diving timing bezel, like you would expect with a dive watch. The bezel does feature 120 clicks and is unidirectional. There's not really much in the way of back play, which is good. I do find the bezel easy to grip, but I have to turn pretty hard. It actually hurts my fingers to adjust this bezel. Uh, it's not as bad as when I first got it, but uh, it's still it's still pretty tight. It's it's much tighter than what I'm used to on on more expensive dive watches. I suppose the one that I own, which would be the Tudor Black Bay Bronze, this is much harder to turn. In terms of loom, though, this is perhaps the best watch I've owned in terms of how easy it is to continue to read in the dark even several hours after charging it up. The loom is all throughout the bezel and also the indices and the hands. And so the bezel pip and minute hand are actually loomed in blue and the rest of the loom used is green. So that's actually the feature I noticed online that made me interested in getting this watch. So here I'm gonna insert some loom footage so you can see it after it was recently charged. In terms of the case, it features both vertically brushed and highly polished areas. The crown is a screw down and you should be able to see that it has the S7 embossed on it. The crown features four positions. So in position zero, which is what we're currently in, the crown is screwed down and thus we have the maximum water resistance. If we unscrew the crown, we will pop out into position one, which we're now in, and that's when the movement can be hand round. So we'll see if you can hear it. In position two, which we are now in, the uh, if you turn the watch counterclockwise, Let's get the second hand out of the way. You can see that the date is changing. If you turn it clockwise, you'll have the day wheel change. And you can see that it's it's done in two languages, English and Spanish. So you'll have like Monday here, turn it again, you'll get lunes for Monday in Spanish, and then so on and so forth. When the watch actually automatically changes the day over, it will cycle twice. So it'll always stay on the language that you've chosen, except when you're manually adjusting it. In position three, which we're now in, you can set the time of the watch. 
You can see the second hand is still moving. This watch does not feature hacking. So as you can see here, the watch does have a closed case back. The bracelet is oyster style. The removable end links are secured via pins. I prefer screws myself. However, I didn't face any issues when I was adjusting the links with the pins. They were pretty easy to remove. Uh, the Watch Nation refers to the clasp as a deployment Z clasp. So you can see it's got the snaps in and it's got the secondary clasp there. Um, and we've got the rotary logo and the Super 7 branding here as well. Uh, this is, it's okay. It's not uh, anything I would write home about in terms of the clasp. Uh, I often find that when I, I mean, it's pretty secure, but I'll often catch it when I'm trying to remove it, which is a little frustrating. More frustrating actually is the limited micro adjust. Uh, I mean, at least it does have micro adjust, but you can see that there are three, there are three positions of micro adjust. So in my experience, what happened is when I first got this watch, I had one additional link removed and I had the micro adjust all the way out, all the way open. And the watch was a little, I could wear it, but it was a little too tight for me. So like I was concerned if my wrist swelled up even slightly, I would, I would be out of luck. So I added a link back in and I fully closed the micro adjust. We're all the way on the most interior position here. And now the watch is too loose. So, it, I mean, it's okay. I'm wearing it as such. It's not, it's not horrid or anything, but I, unfortunately, if there were just a few more options, I would, I would be able to get this a little more comfortable than I can currently. The watch does feature a diver extension, so you can lift up this part of the bracelet, pops open, and you'll get a little more space uh, so that you can wear this over a wetsuit. And then it, just snaps back into place. This watch features the Miyota 8205 caliber movement. It runs at three hertz and offers a 42 hour power reserve. The movement does rely on an indirect drive system for the seconds hand, which can result in the seconds hand stuttering or hesitating or stalling. The stuttering behavior is normal and it is said to not impact the actual timekeeping, but I believe that would explain why hacking would be fairly pointless to even put on this movement because the seconds hand can so easily fall out of sync. It happens to mine readily with uh, rapid wrist flicks and I'll demonstrate that when I actually show the watch on my wrist in a little bit. This movement also features a unidirectional rotor. Those who have seen my Hamilton Khaki Pilot Pioneer Auto Chrono review, which has the H31 movement, know I really dislike rotor wobble associated with unidirectional rotors. There was another review I saw before I made my purchase of this watch. That reviewer had indicated that the rotor wobble was not noticeable to him, so I decided I'd take a chance. And I, I agree. So having owned this watch and I wore it for a week straight, I did not feel the rotor wobble. I'm assuming it's because this case is so thick that it, it mutes the ability to feel it, but it also could be a difference with the Miyota movement uh, versus the Hamilton, which was the H31 is based on a Valjou movement. In a relatively quiet room, I can hear the rotor spinning freely in the non-winding direction, but I don't feel it. And that's, that's my big, I have other watches where I can kind of hear the rotor. The movement is advertised with a pretty poor timekeeping range of minus 20 seconds per day to plus 40 seconds per day. But let's go ahead and take a look at this watch on the time grapher. So here we are on the time grapher in the dial up position and you can see that we are currently getting a minus eight seconds per day on the movement. I've actually already measured the movement in several other positions, actually the dial down position and the 12, three, six, and nine positions up. Factoring in all six of those positions, I get an average gain of one second per day. But the range is this minus eight seconds per day that we just saw all the way to plus nine seconds per day. I have noticed in some of the other positions, particularly the more unusual positions that you probably wouldn't notice the watch in, or I should say wear the watch in very often, that it can vary quite a bit. Like at, during an entire minute, you might have 
the first 30 seconds go fast and the second 30 seconds be significantly different. So my general sense is that the watch does look like the movement had some level of regulation to it, but it's not highly adjusted to all positions, which given the price point that we'll discuss in a little bit, isn't particularly unusual. Okay. So here is the watch on my 6.75 inch wrist. I want to go ahead and show you that second stutter here. So you can see the second hand and if you do a quick move. See how it paused there at the three o'clock position. Installed there again. So that's the, that's the stuttering second, seconds hand. You can even notice the stutter though when you uh, put the watch on its side, for example. So say if I have the nine o'clock position up, you can see that the seconds hand will actually struggle as it tries to continue to climb versus when it starts to fall back down again. So, so that's really what's meant by all of that. But supposedly it doesn't impact uh, timekeeping, I guess, the, because the hour and minutes are actually independent of that second hand. So they're still going along fine. Uh, the second hand, I guess, is just more for show. All right. So what are my overall thoughts on this watch? I'd say the positives are it's got an easy read dial. It has great loom. It's reasonably accurate for the price. And noting the price, it's affordable. The negatives are the watch is pretty bulky and heavy. It has a limited micro adjust on the bracelet, which I found frustrating. The stutter seconds is annoying and the bezel is tougher to turn than I would like. So I bought this watch from Watch Nation off of eBay, which seems like the easiest place for US buyers to obtain it. And it only costs roughly $282 when I made the purchase. So a lot of my negatives really need to be factored in against that low price point. Overall, the watch is really robust, and I was pleasantly surprised with how well it keeps time, especially given how poorly performing the movement is advertised as from Miyota. It might be my least accurate watch that I currently own. I think it is. But if it's not getting thrown off by a minute over a week-long period, then I think that's a solid performance for a watch under a grand. And when I wore this for a week straight, I did not notice that I had to change the minute hand to re-sync it back up with one of my more accurate clocks. So... Uh, accuracy wise and actual real world performance, I thought it was pretty good. My sense is that this watch is moving into the space that the Seiko SKX was at one point, uh, but I've never actually owned an SKX, so I don't really have a personal ability to compare it to that watch. When I was looking for orange dial dive watches and then I drilled down at this price point, in terms of what's still being made, the only other one that really caught my eye is the Islander automatic dive watch. And it might be worth one's time to read about the differences between the Islander and this rotary and decide which one might be more appealing because while they're like within $20 of each other, there are dif different feature sets that you might want to consider. So for example, the Islander movement allows hacking, uh, but it's got 100 meters less water resistance than this rotary does. So I've not owned a, an Islander or had one in for review, so I can't really comment any further other than to tell you that they have one. It looks kind of like this or it looks like an SKX uh, and it's at a similar price point. Regardless of all of that, my overall take is that this watch is uh, an excellent choice uh, for a sub $300 diver. It packs a lot of punch and is performing a lot better than I had expected it would. Thanks for watching this review video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it helps the channel out. Subscribe if you'd like to be automatically notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.